I don't know, but but whatever happens, the Pennsylvania Houston is going to get Astros. Pennsylvania is going to get tore up. They were already getting stupid when they won. They're climbing all, right, all over the, the Jalen Hurts, is dude. Do they they lube the poles. Hey. The city pays to lube the poles because they get fucked up and they climb the poles and break. They, no, they were falling through. That's the a t- weird ass deal. They were falling through the tops of the bus stops and stuff. And oh yeah, they're yeah. acting really stupid. This is the Here's the Deal podcast, the Max Baker Jr. story. And I'm not even sure what number episode we are on right now. But uh, fact checker. <laughs> well, I think it's 37. Th- all right. We'll go with that. Uh, <laughs> just in case he's wrong, I'll go ahead and say 36 and 38. That way I can edit that in later if necessary. Or you could, or you could just leave the right number in, which would be 37. <laughs> Whatever you want to do, Jay. Uh, to my right, very special guest, uh, someone who I've known for many years, Mr. Mike Cook. And uh, up, Mike, man? welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having the me. The largest man in show business. <laughs> <laughs> and if it weren't for Max Baker, you and I wouldn't have met when we did years ago. Yeah, of course, that's exactly how it went down. Max obviously is here as well. The stories about him, we w- couldn't do an episode without him. <laughs> and uh, Jeff Brown into his right. Yeah, in his name and the title of the show. I mean, I guess we could do one, but man, my what's that guy's name that they weekend at Bernie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've threatened to do that for years to somebody. Well, I can be your guy. So, Mike, you and I met. Years ago, Max would put on shows in Tulsa at the Canes Ballroom where once they rent, the Rogers family bought the Canes and they renovated and they bought that space next door that was the old machine shop and, and stuff, uh, that became Bob's is what they called it at the time. And now there's a barbecue restaurant in there and the restrooms are at the back end. But that became the second stage. And so Max would do these shows with local bands and there would be, you know... 16. 16 bands on on one show and each stage is going back and forth where one band plays, the other one's setting up and vice versa. So, so the rooms are alternating when they're playing. And he used to have us mc these shows and we would have to walk back and forth from that side room to the main stage and on the poster and in the, in the, the commercials i know because i'm the one who made them but they would say mc'd by the midget and the tall guy <laughs> <laughs> hey it looked good, <laughs> Real yeah, good. Some, some, which which one of you was which <laughs> i don't know and i just remember by you know band eight or nine you you would be hammered. Yeah, I remember, that's exactly what I remember about that. <laughs> it was free beer for many. So uh, let, let's talk about some of the things that you've got going on right now, because uh, you're right. Mr. TV superstar celebrity right now. I do have a lot going on right now. Um, recently, uh, the Good Guys Gazette did an article on me and it be like at Barnes and Nobles, you can pick that up. Uh, court, uh, uh, Motor Train TV, uh, the ride, the well, ride of your life is ride, that it? Well, it used to be ride called something else. They changed it, but it was uh, it's a ride of your life with Courtney Hanson, and I'm the parts man on that, which is what I actually do in real life. Right? No, shop. you're chasing the hot chick, dude. <laughs> well, <laughs> she's paying would, you. That would be well, the hot chick didn't pay me. I think the Chelsea is the hot chick. Yeah, <laughs> she's we the all boss. know that. She's the boss. But uh, so I got that going. Matter of fact, tonight is uh, I'm doing a watch party for one of the episodes. Yeah, okay, so what? What day and what time does it air? It comes on Wednesday, nine o'clock Central Motor Trend TV. Yeah, nine o'clock nine, Central, nine Central Wednesdays yeah. on Motor Trend TV. On Motor Trend TV, and aren't you? You can also stream it on the Motor Trend app, and you can do it anytime Wednesday. And, and I know that you can download that on any Roku TV or, or I smart think so, device. Yeah. And then also, too, for the people in Oklahoma City, don't you have a live watch party every Wednesday? I do. You try to. What, what's the name of the place? The Paddock Club. The Paddock I Club do down in Paddock, Paddock Town. Yeah. Over you know, if you want to hang out with Mike and, you know, watch watch the show and just actually be around a bunch of cool people, this is the place to be yeah, on Wednesday. Yeah, car people going there and just 
chill. Cool. Sometimes if the weather's right, they they come in their hot rods, right? Yeah, exactly. Now next week I'll actually Max, do you it. know this. Pretty much everywhere Mike goes, there's hot rods there. Absolutely. <laughs> no, no, hot I, rods are my rods. I'll even go one better. There's hot rods. There's craziness. There's uniqueness, and there's times you'll never forget. That's true. <laughs> so but, you, you've also got uh, a role in an upcoming movie. Yeah, the Killers of the Flower Moon, which is Martin Scorsese movie with DiCaprio and De Niro in it. Leonardo Never heard DiCaprio of them. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you this. Scorsese is a very nice guy. DiCaprio was really cool. I didn't meet De Niro. You know, but everybody I was around, that was like, they treated me like way over the okay, top. Okay, so that. originally... But, you just had kind of like uh, an extra part, and then that kind of evolved into an actual speaking part in the movie, uh, correct? Exactly. So it started out as just, okay, we're going to have you do this. Then it was, hey, can you say these lines? Then it just, uh, I almost got two or three lines, but then they're like, no, that took long enough. But just sometimes they got to condense it down. But it was cool. I stayed up there like a whole week and just ran around, had fun, you know, met all the like what i didn't know because i had never been in a movie but like say the head chef well if he likes that guy every movie he does has that chef mm -hmm. lighting yeah. camera the scorsese's whole that guy you know yep if you're in with him you're in with him you know and this is the uniqueness about mike you know mike's a likable guy and he got in there and got into the movie you know for the people that don't know what the movie's about it's about indian land and oklahoma territory uh, it also was is the making of the FBI, and you know Mike. And back then, you could kill somebody and take their land; and it was yours. And then they they had guys out there hawking like Michael be in the so movie. So they didn't have really billboards and stuff yet, because this was in the early twenties. So it goes back to the old days of how we advertise shows, walking around handing out flyers, handbills, and so. That's right up your alley. As they get off the train in the scene I'm in, one of the opening scenes of the movie, DiCaprio's getting off the train, and I'm hawking these flyers, and I walk up to him and make it rich, man. Just keep going. <laughs> and it's cool. So uh, DiCaprio's chef on set during the shooting there in Tulsa was uh, Kyle Williams' wife. Kyle Williams oh, from wow. the band 80 Proof. Yeah. And then he and his he's, wife are in a band called Medicine Horse. He's like a Pantera cover band, too. That dude can do Pantera yeah. all day, every day. Every day. Kyle Williams. So, yeah. Mike, before the the current TV show and Killers of the, uh, the Flower Moon and all of that, what other TV shows have you been in? Like, uh, I remember you were on Monster Garage. I did two episodes of Monster Garage. Uh, I was on... I did a lot of local uh, Fowler... Toyota commercials, whatever guy with Chad Stevens. Yep. I did uh, American Daredevils. Uh, I was on America's Got Talent. America's Got Talent. America's right. Got Talent. Yep. Crashed on there. Too. I did. Caught on fire. <laughs> the, school, <laughs> the school bus uh, that was jump. Good. Yeah. Uh, the tribute to Evil Knievel that Jackass did. The MTV presents uh, Stillwater. Yeah. Yeah. Johnny Knoxville. Yep, that was cool. And then, that's when he he ruptured his testicles. Right, and that's I, when I was standing. Right there. <laughs> Travis was. That guy got hurt. I'm going over here. Travis was trying to duct tape Michael to the to the handlebars of that, and then uh, flip with him. Okay, so is that where you actually set a Guinness Book of World Records? Was that at that yes. shooting? And that was, was. The, the that was. was the the backflip with trigger, correct? It was, no, no, the backflip with Travis. With Travis, I did a Travis. 113 foot jump with trigger. Okay, because we were because you poked. you got in there twice, correct? Yes. Okay. So and then I was actually supposed to do a long distance jump with trigger a long time before that uh, when he actually jumped up in Miami, but he crashed, so that kind of knocked that deal out of the way. So then when I came. When he came back in Stillwater and was setting this still up, he called me immediately, like at any time he was down. It's like, dude, check this out. I'm like, really? He goes, we'll do it. But at the end of the week, I'm like, all right, cool. And so it was kind of raining. There wasn't much to do. They're like, what do we film now? Everybody's either You know, things just happen quick. Too deep of mud or whatever. And Trigger's like, pull that ramp up. Get on the bike. I was like, sweet. 
113 foot baby that's pretty awesome yeah because i when that came out i remember talking you know you watching. buy me at walmart oh yeah it's <laughs> <laughs> awesome so we were walking through walmart actually and there was that video sitting on the deal and i was like mom check that out like, Bam, right now. <laughs> uh now so you and i go back you know a couple of decades but you and max you guys go b- from birth. You know, birth pretty much so his dad max's dad and my grandpa cook grew up around the same stuff and max and my dad are about the same age race motorcycles together stuff like that and then i'm just gonna throw this out there completely random out of nowhere yeah just a wild guess they were both car guys Max's dad and <laughs> grandpa definitely was. Like, uh, you know, I've known, well, my dad built uh, Big Max's 55 Chevrolet when I was 15. And I went on the road with it and uh, took it to Indy and stuff with him. And that's how I got to know Max, or as you know, I know him, Max. It's, it's like how, how Michael came into my life is basically Mike's dad, like you said, and my dad. They build cars. They work on cars. Their life is cars. And so, and they're both. No big deal. They, they, they just they, built they, some cars. And they're built they're both. Fucking from, badass they're built both, cars, They're bro. built both the same backbone. They haven't always cared about what I've done in my life. And they haven't always cared about what Mike done in his life. They thought we were kind of just fucking off. And we probably was. But yeah. <laughs> you are. Sorry. You're friends with me. But, and you're friends with Jeff. Yeah. So clearly, but, there's a pattern but here. But as time went on, you know, and Mike started getting into being on the Jesse Jane and the Monster Garage. And, well, and I got to know Max, too, just from shows. Cause, you know, and you know, coming to concerts and just, you know, being a friend of the family. And, you know, and it's like when you're a friend of my family, we're family. And, you know, Mike's like a little brother to me, and he's intriguing. I'll tell you how much inside family I am. I seen a Christmas picture at his dad's house. And it pans around. And right in the center is a picture of me and his dad. Right on the mantle. Not the whole thing. It's me and his dad. And I was like, hey, I know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he but, took the one with him and Max down a long time ago. <laughs> but where, where, where me and Mike really came in contact is you know in 2009 i had that terrible fall and we had we i got hurt really bad and i was pretty much left for dead didn't really even care at one point i didn't care about living you know but my you know as as i started getting into the casinos and this the areas were coming in we were able to start doing these events you know and they needed uh they needed you know talent like you know mike's on television he's a celebrity he can come hang out sign at autographs be seen at the casino so I started booking him, getting him jobs, getting him things, and, you know, personal appearances, and, you know, and, and it's like, but then we, we, uh, we got involved with the metal militia, and, and, you know, Evil Knievel being one of my all-time favorite heroes, uh, you know, and Mike being, like, we met up with these daredevils, and they thought it was the craziest thing in the world to take a midget, and you know they wanted to make him a daredevil too. Well, they figured out within five minutes they're like, "Dude, can you ride a dirt bike?" And I'm like, "Well, yeah, I rode a dirt bike my whole life. Like, there's only a few things I know, and it's music, dirt bikes, cars, chicks, and booze. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what order, what I'm doing right then. So my buddy had this little mini bike, and I get on it, and I rip a big old wheelie, and Bunny hop up his curb and land, do another wheelie, and they're like, you, you want know, to go so, around with us? So, like, so yes. they took a liking to him, you know, and, and made him part of all this. And with that, you know, and like my dad, my dad said, hey, man, I really need you to, to watch over Mike, you know, and make sure that he's getting taken care of, not getting taken advantage of, and all that. So away we went, you know. His, the, he started doing personal appearances. The Jackass movie came about. Uh, stunts, you know. Then he created his own stunt. Where is this the time where you met Trigger with the yes. metal militia this stuff? Was all, yes. So I had done Monster Garage. Okay, hold, hold on. Talk about Trigger for just a second. Trigger Gum. Trigger Gum. I'll let Mike talk to him. But, but uh, this is Trigger Gum 
was considered to me the one of the world's greatest long distance jumpers to ever live. Okay, so was, if if you haven't heard of Trigger, you need to get on YouTube. Google him. Get on YouTube and just search Trigger Gum, and you're going to see what we're all talking about. Because you know, I didn't know anything about him until Max, you brought Mike and, and Trigger up to the radio station when I was on the air, and we did an interview, and, and I didn't know it then. But it's when that you guys were filming the the Evil Can Evil tribute with right. Jack I had Extra already Guy. Done Trigger but a before years that, he had tried a 300 foot uh, jump in Miami, Oklahoma, and you know all week all week long one. he'd been clearing it. Come showtime, he he wrecked and broke his neck, you know. But but at that time, people that are world famous now were just kids. We had like who Robbie Madison, Rob Madison uh, was there. Was it wasn't Seth one of the Deegans Inslow there? Was there. Seth Deegan Inslow, was just there. Brighton. Uh, I mean, was all these guys that you read about? Was Kenny Bartram there? there? He was, there. he was there. I mean, and the crazy part about it is these were all guys that you know we just hired a team to come and do stunts. Little did we know that these guys that were doing these stunts were would go on to do super super great with things. with medals and X yeah. Games and it was, stuff. It was one of those deals that at first it was all right. Trigger's gonna do this jump. Then it evolved where Trigger really pushed it, and like you know we had racing. Lost energy drinks, which was a part of Monster. It was basically the you know he was of he was a guy who like he was able to get sponsorship. He had sponsorship. I mean, he come to this town. He, he come to this town. Like, that, that motocross. He, he came to motor, He came to Miami, Oklahoma, and they gave him the key to the city. He yep. tore up cars. He tore up bars. <laughs> I, I I had to go around for a week and put fires out with this guy, him and Mike, <laughs> carry Mike out of out of bars. Go to no, not mine. <laughs> Go to strip. No, bar. we went to strip bar somewhere on the border of Kansas and Missouri, hey. and they beat him with belts. Remember, <laughs> you and Brad was in the front SUV. We was in the back. We come around, and Trigger Tully just goes pop, and you got they yep. were split out. I mean, and and listen, like, oh, it was the first shit. time I'd ever seen in my life somebody motocross an Escalade. <laughs> well, dude, if, if that's what you do for a living, there's well, no off here, switch. Here's the you thing. know what I'm saying? I, like, I uh -uh. learned by hanging out with those guys. I mean, I've hung out with a lot of rock stars, but these motorcycle dudes, it's man, you know, animal, what happened when, tri when Trigger got hurt, all them boys threw... All the, all the, it was like, it looked like a, 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 a true rock star party. All, all the furniture by the pool, the Coke box, Some motorcycle, up in the all hospital. into the water. You know, oh, I mean, into the pool. And, and that was their way, that was the their way of, of, of being we, we should probably their, clarify by you coke know, box you mean it, vending machine whatever yes. it was but yeah. you know, <laughs> it, it was a way for them to let out their frustration of their friend getting hurt. You know, and, and, the one and, thing I will tell you about that is when me and Trigger got real close was that week because I stayed there all week with him. He made me stay in his room until his wife got there and then I went and got my own room. And all that week, every night, we would just sit there and watch videos of jumping and talking to evil on phone, all this crazy stuff. You know, stuff. I mean, evil, he was, evil, evil Knievel was his mentor and they were on first talk name yeah. basis. You know, and at the time, Evil Knievel was having this things called Evil Days. Yeah. And in Butte, Montana, where it was nothing but stunts. You know, and at that time, Mike, he, uh, he got a stunt going where he'd ride a mini bike through the walls of fire and so you know and my dad's like hey you know you need you need to take care and at the time i was managing people booking people so i you know took mike under my wing his bike we're gonna see what we can do you know and we did we've done a lot of things you guys did a lot you but, know i so mean back to the trigger deal like when trigger jumped and crashed that was crazy because basically i just spent all every minute of every day for the last week with this dude helping him train learning about reading the wind and all this and then he just grenades and, and watching him nail these jumps take after like take it after was take. nothing I, I knew what happened as soon as he jumped and he's coming back down i could feel the wind shift and i was like kind of paying attention i went this ain't good and then he just come up short. So midair just switched directions on him and, yeah, and, and changed his trajectory. Went from a tailwind to a headwind. What do they say on Wide World of Sports? The 
thrill of victory and, and the agony, agony of defeat. defeat. You but, seen it all right so there. So after these dudes all had fights and went home, all his buddies, well, I just stayed. I just sat in the lobby and they go, hey, you can go home. I said, no, I want to talk to Trigger before I go home. And his wife came in with him to bring him back to his hotel room after he got released from the hospital. And she goes, you're still here? And I said, I'm making sure y'all are cool. After that, I talked to Trigger all the time. And we, they we, went everywhere. We, tight. we did shows in Vegas selling freestyle motocross. We did... Uh, Evil days, three or four times, a couple times. I got, I got up with Mike in Vegas, and he was so drunk, I had to throw him over my shoulder <laughs> like a bag of potatoes. Dude, take that, to I had to do that at that Kane show. <laughs> Dude, so, like, our booth that me and Trigger was at was right here, and the free beer booth was right here. Like, <laughs> this is a Same setup. over. Yeah, it was way You know, and, and so, uh, with that, and Mikey doing the... You that, know, it was Trigger's idea uh, for me to do yeah, you know, fire. to do the fire, and then we did. We broke a record with it. Yeah, uh, down at the airport, and we got invited know, we, to Evil Days. Yeah, we got we we got the one of the That's coolest. That's such a one, huge one, deal, one of the man. coolest. One of the coolest <laughs> trips. Like fuck, listen, bro. one of the one of the coolest trips I've ever been on. Mike tells me, "Hey, man, they invited me to go now to Evil was, Days. Will you take me? I drive tried, me up there." They sent me an email, and I said, "Here, we need this." Blah, blah, blah. I called Max. I said, we got to go to dinner. Okay. And I go over to his house. And he's like, all right, let's go. I said, wait, read this first. And he's like, all right, we're going to go eat real quick. I got to help you write this. And we wrote all kinds of funny yeah. stuff in there. Just I rewrote his contract cool. for him. So, you know, and, and, and listen, on way on the road we went. You know, like I said, we stopped in Denver. I remember how we added like condoms and red bulls yeah. and all this shit. So I forgot that was in the bottom of the contract, and I sent it to the. You got a concert promoter who's seen the most <laughs> fucked up writers of all time his whole life, and you put him in charge of that. You had well, to know hey, listen, that he's going to put got some a weird shit in there. We the whole when time. we got there, but we got a badass know, steak dinner right? they gave us. Hey, what you didn't know. Is one of the times that the casino called, like, hey, we need it by right now, send it to me. Yeah. I sent him that without changing any of it. So it still said, like, a bottle of this <laughs> and that. And they're like, they call me back, hey, I go, oh, shit, that was the wrong contract. Everything but that part. Right. I just said, mark that out, you know. <laughs> but some, some places you could get away with it. But, like, this evil days in Butte, Montana, I mean, <sighs> I mean, we got to. We got this D and C extra, and D. extra, extra large Magnum condoms, <laughs> dude. And then they're like, "Do you want to stay over here, or do you want to stay next door to Spanky Spangler?" I'm like, "I went right next door to Spanky Spangler," and he had us get up and sit at the specific table early in the morning. And we watched the sunrise over the mountain in Butte, and there's a big statue. I think it's Mary statue. Yeah, and. uh at that time of year it comes up right behind her and makes it glow and he's like me and evil used to sit here and it's spanky tell me all this and i was like Whoa. you know and then we went and watched this watch him fall jump out of a mine shaft we couldn't even we were, he rode his mini bike and i'm riding my wheelchair and we can't even get up the the the, the that's the, totally the road. The, it's totally the same bro totally the same. <laughs> Oh, it was, it, that whole t weekend was it was insane. Yeah, okay, we got so invited to this big party uh, with all the <laughs> Knievels and that feeding us and all this. And Spanky does his retirement jump right in front of us, and he invited me to go set it all up. And then we get back down to the bottom of the hill where the big party is, and they just shut down downtown and have this huge festival, like yeah, we're six the bucks for seven beers, and it's like a ice bag with like that much ice in it. And then, like, all these beers just crammed in this whole ice bag. All these people just carried it around. That's straight you know, up your I'm, style, bro. I ended, know you. I ended up on stage with Mike you know that, that Black that town. Flag, and I'm in a Speedo. <laughs> yeah. No, in that town. Here, here's, the, here's the thing. In that town where the, uh, the motocross jumpers and freestylers did, there was a, a, a first time I'd ever seen a grow. They had a grow in Montana downtown with the garage doors open. You could just see weed while these guys were performing. Well, Dan, that's not and that's not how you do it. That's how you turn them all into males, you know. But Jesus. uh you know that was going on and then 
uh, the, the, the headlining band was Black Flag. And so Black Flag... Which play, one? Uh, was the Mike Varney one? Yeah. The Mike Varney one. Because they had played here yeah, like He had played two here. He played that, here at the Farmer's Market. Went. We told him we'd see him in uh, Butte. And so... I look around, where's the midget? The midget's on stage in a Speedo uh, fucking crowd surfing. Okay, dude. <laughs> so, and I'm hanging out with Evil Knievel's granddaughter, Christy, yeah, right. which who's I actually chasing talked him. to the other day. <laughs> so, and I don't mean chasing him like I'm talking about. I've the, seen it happen, dude. Here's, here's, seen it happen. here's what I can tell you about Montana. Oh, we're still friends today, dude. Here's She's what I can cool. tell you about Montana in the summer. The women there, you can tell they've been let out of the house and they're looking for action. <laughs> Dude, remember them chicks that jump in your wheelchair? Dude, Max is going through and I I'm got standing scared, on the back. Dude. And there's two chicks just jump on him and they're like, we've been watching you and your buddy all day. And their dudes are like right across there. the way and we're like, oh man, Max. We got to go. They go hey, I know exactly what Max said. How much are they paying us? <laughs> <laughs> it was more like, Hi, are you ready to get out of here? <laughs> <laughs> you know, or the times like some of the other gigs that that, that I've been able to get him was uh, I've dressed him up in Mr. Moneybags for eight weeks. Good, yeah. uh, Saw that. What was it? Were you in a... Uh, you were driving suit, around a... a little a, car. A, a yeah. big wheel Escalade? No, that was, that was when he was a leprechaun. No, I just walked around as a rubber. You just car. walked around the on money bags when I was in. You were in a little, tuxedo, the little yes. power wheels. Yeah. And, and power they, wheels. They That's bought him wheel. a power wheel that was Escalade. Yeah. And then didn't you give that lady like a check for a million five? Yeah, I had to like hold the big yeah. check and all that <laughs> stuff. Like, yeah. It was cool. Okay, so one of the greatest mini mic moments of all time happened in our offices at the cat, the cat offices. At the time, exactly at the time, our HR. Human resources and business office lady, the lady who signs all of our, makes sure all of our payroll checks are sent. <laughs> extremely, extremely freaked out by clowns <laughs> and midgets. Uh -oh. seen, I've seen some people like that. And this yeah. was around Halloween. And so, you know, Mike will put on the crazy, you know, scary clown outfit. And so we have him come up and we have him just like, walk into her office and she's not even noticing until he gets closer and she screams <laughs> and runs full sprint down the hallway just screaming and running and mike <laughs> is running after her <laughs> and screaming at her too i was That's like awesome. we're all fucking getting fired That's awesome. what was it just a prank oh yeah like we just messing with her remember when i worked at the haunted when, porch yeah when he, so, he was a wicked right because we did clown at the haunted we forest. did the remotes out there and, and promoted it so and I so that's what we that's did. Where you is, got, that's the what did. I said, hey, they've asked me to do this at the radio station. She goes, can I go? And I go, if you do my makeup, you can do whatever you want. So she met me up there, and we sat in the, like, downstairs and then walked up there, and she got to see the whole deal. Yeah, it was, was uh, cool. it was it was epic, and we are so lucky that we still have jobs. <laughs> well, I mean, I've got a couple of I got a couple of moments uh, like that with yeah, you, man. Really. <laughs> I got I got one from Mike, and you know it was no pay involved, nothing. We have a friend named Rick Knight, mm -hmm. another car guy, and he had a building down there on Robinson that was sold it to the city for the well, map or whatever it was. His building. He had buildings on both sides. So where that new park is. The okay, Scissor explain Tail to people park. what Hubcap Alley was. Hubcap Alley was between 10th and 15th on South Robinson, which is now basically Scissor Tail Park. And all the way from the time basically cars were cars until recently, that was where you went to get auto accessories, hubcaps, wheels, tires. Aftermarket parts. Mufflers, body shops. And it's been that way. There were people that had businesses down there before they ripped all that up. That's where that real in. car people went. Exactly. Right. And you know, there's not very many of those places left. No. There, there was but, fourth and fifth generation businesses that were still operating when they went in and said, now we're done, you're having a park. You know, so, but, yeah. but on 4th of July, 
My buddy Rick. Knight Rick used to always have this party. He, yeah. he used to always have this party, and so one summer, uh, it was me, Mike, and Austin, and we were like, "Well, we want, we're going to do something special for it. We're gonna we're we're going to." I I, I put fireworks on his helmet, duct taped him. Yep, we found some. <laughs> and then Rick got him on his bike. mini bike. We and we lit him. Cops were everywhere. Ple- people were everywhere. Illegal as hell. <laughs> you know, a, a typical. We're getting ready to break the law. This is south, and, and, and so it been and so they, and we were south side, and the cops. I can remember the cop watching us all do it. I mean, from the time we lit him. To where, and then he rode down the street <laughs> with these things shooting just off, wide open, and no just rights, as fast no as he could go, and people yelling, you know. <laughs> and I mean, and when it was all over, that cop pulls up with his lights on and tells us, "Y'all aren't going to do that again, are you?" <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "No, we no, didn't bring any more fireworks." <laughs> <laughs> and then, then he says. That was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, but 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 just things like that, you know. I mean, when I had my birthday bashes, I think you did it one time at City did, Limits. I did. The Bullet Boys. Everybody stopped, didn't know what to think. You know, I mean, it, it, I got a cool picture of my we, evil Knievel the, suit. And I'm just like, yeah. And then we did it uh, Lost, Lost Highway. Highway. I did do it at Lost Highway for when uh, Travis recreated Evil's jumps. Mm-hmm. And, that you know, was crazy because one of the little sparklers didn't sparkle; it blew up like a cannonball. <laughs> you know, but but I thought the, it blew. The, the You're one no thing, stranger to danger, Mike. I, no, I am not. The one thing that I can say about Michael uh, is, you know, I've known him all my life. Uh, you're a very, 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 very dear inspiration to me. You're like Thank my you, mentor Max. because, you know. If people know the life of a midget or little person, whatever you want to call them, they're not supposed to live. And not only does Michael live, but Michael lives like fucking rock star. <laughs> and I've helped him. Yeah, he you has. Know? That's what you're you know, saying about and, and so when I when I hurt when I hurt myself, you know, and you know, I'm not going to be able to do this and 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 you know, be, being feeling sorry for myself and and you know and all this. You know, and then here comes Mike to see me, and it's like, you know, he's like, look, dude, if I can do it, you can do it. And so... I spent a lot know, of time at the hospital. You, you know, know, so... We had some good talks, though. And, and, you know, and, and some of us haven't been so lucky. Like, you know, Trigger took his own life. What, was yeah. last year? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it just... That wreck hurt him, and he never got over it. You know, I mean, some things you just don't ever get over it, you know, and then you take a look and, you know, you look at, you hear people say, oh, uh, I'm fucked up and, you know, I'm never going to be able to live or never going to be able to make it. Just like I said, when I was crippled and I'm still crippled, but as long as you figure out a way to move around, you not lose your spunk, then, you know, that's, that's the drive there. But then you see a guy like Mike. You know, and it's like, oh, what are you doing, Mike? Oh, man, I got a bit part in this movie. Not only did you get a bit part in the movie, but you got a bit part in probably one of the biggest movies it'll ever be, <laughs> much less to win so many Academy Awards, it won't even be funny. Mini you know? Mike at the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> in an evil hey. Knievel suit. And guess what? Don't think it he's won't gotta have, He's got to have a manager. That's what's so funny. He's I got, know it's going to happen. He's got to have a manager. That's all I got to say. Uh, but, you know, that just the things that we have done together, you know, it's like your dad and my dad are a lot alike. Mm-hmm. You know, they may not have liked what we've done or become, but they've accepted it and now they're proud of it because we do what we do. Yep. And the other part of it is, you know, I don't think without the direction of my father or your father, you know, and I mean, hey, you've, they been, us a, you've been on more trips with my dad than I have. They're just as crazy he as likes you trip with you. <laughs> he likes you better, Mike. You know. I think he t- well, I just sat over there and just <laughs> let it rip, you know. I mean, but just you know, just the whole fact of the matter is, is 
it's it's my honor to call you my brother you know Same here, i mean man. and we've been you know zz top dude yeah <laughs> jerry lee lewis yep uh i remember know. calling max right, the, so jerry that was lee my lewis next question house. what's the best show that you've seen with max that's hard there's three there's three there's three it would be because he got me to the tickets was uh i seen part of it with you uh my mom was there too would be this would be number three would be uh stray cat pretend and uh ZZ top. ZZ top when we went to where was that show uh, zoo zoo Stray Cat, ZZ Top, and Joan the Jett? Pretenders. It was, no, the and pretend, the Pretenders. No, oh. not Joan Jett. The Pretenders. The pretenders. Yeah, it was still. Badass. That's a freaking amazing lineup. It was. I it can was I can give you three. So then we go later, and these two are pretty well tied because of just stuff that happened. Jay Lee Lewis, the first time I saw him, because you had hired Brian to be and, in that and, and, and and, my and poison oaky no no my yes. no, it, the poison it was Oakies, well, it, it, it was wasn't the poison it band. wasn't the poison oakies he was here he wears black yeah. johnny cash uh, he was scott uh, keaton uh, it was scott keaton the, the johnny cash uh, uh, brian brian was, dunning uh, uh carl perkins yeah and so i hired them to do durant he wears black and jerry lee at the, you know it was, and me and brian so, and so, they were jerry and, lee's band no they were the no, opening Scott band. Keaton, were the, they were the opening band. He wears black. I didn't Johnny know if it Cash. was a Bo Diddley situation. No, or... it wasn't a Bo Diddley situation. Jerry had his own band. But Brian and Michael and the band, they roll up in a pink Cadillac. Brian's pink Cadillac. Yeah, bro. <laughs> and so, you know, I mean, this was rock and roll at its finest. This, they hadn't even played yet. And I'm getting, I'm getting harassed by the... Uh, BIA law in Choctaw because they had beer. There was no beer allowed on the premises. Mike is riding around in the trunk, and they didn't dig that. <laughs> well, and then I didn't Lame. know. So Brian goes, act like that car is yours because he knows I'm a huge Yeah, you set him up. So I'm just sitting on the deck with the car. I didn't know that you could be outside as Jerry walked in the car. So they come, hey, you can't do that. Get in here. And I'm like, all right, cool. Sorry. But, and Brian didn't know either. So I'm standing there, and they made us all line up. Max is there, too. And Jerry Lee walks by and just kind of waves at everybody. And he got to me, and he stopped, and he looked at me, and he goes, Pete Cadillac? I said, it is. And he goes, how you doing, killer? And I go, I'm doing great, killer. He shook my hand and walked <laughs> right out, didn't say another word. Uh, not him, not nobody. Just Bam, out the door. You know, the, and I was like, Jerry Lee Lewis shook my hand, dude. You know, and the crazy thing about that day was his band, before they went on stage, they had to see them boys play. And you know what? They're like, man, that band's good. And they, they dug it, and Jerry Lee had to hear it, you know. But he got on there. He's and been went, there before. He got, he got on there, and he was the killer, you know. And then when... Uh, 2020, ZZ Top, Durant. Yeah, but I, it, you're leaving one off. Oh, uh, oh, the Grand Casino. Jerry Lee. Jerry Lee, when he was, man, it was on like one of his last. We wore suits. Stops. We did. We wore suits and sat on and the front row. Right. Oh, you know, dude. we got escorted. I wanted an dude, extreme amount of money. That they were at that, we pretty much got escorted all the way around that place because. I guess we just looked like we were up to trouble. Yeah, yeah. You guys look like the Oklahoma City <laughs> South Side versions like, of Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> we were listen. We were on the sub twins. It was <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it was that that one. But then again, the Billy in twenty twenty. Right when I, and I was, I had met Billy Gibbons on Monster Garage, but to meet the entire band and get a picture of me and Max. That was cool. That's man. pretty dope. Yeah, that was when because ZZ Top and then my COVID favorite hit. Band. ZZ Top been my favorite band since I was a little kid, like twelve years old. So like, and they're into hot rods and 
girls and the whole deal. And it was like, I just met the people that showed me how to be a rock star, man. <laughs> well, that's well, where... Uh, that's where we will end this episode of the Here's the Deal podcast, the Max Baker Jr. story. Mike, I love you, Mike. I love you too, Max. Thanks for coming on with us, man. Uh, for sure. It's always a blast, me. brother. Always. No, I'm, I'm stuck. Hey, listen. Awesome. Maybe we can get you to come out of retirement and I can like those fireworks on your head again. <laughs> We're going to have to go get another helmet. I gave that one to the SEBA station. That, you know why they hang a Daredevil's motorcycle from the ceiling when it goes into a museum? Especially when he's four foot tall, he can't get it down to come out of retirement. <laughs> That's how you put it away. Yeah. So it's like this big motorcycle room, motocross room, all these dirt bikes. And there's mine. And mine's way up high. Like, why did you do that? Remember how I told you you come get it any time? There it is. Oh, crap. I got, I got your back, Mike. I can reach that motherfucker. <laughs>